Hey, Aaron here. What you're about to watch is the lesson on Airtable formulas for my ultimate guide to Airtable, which can take you from beginner to expert in Airtable. I'm going to be releasing a free lesson from my course every week for a little while on the channel. If you want to get more free lessons, you can get the freebie in the description. I'm also including a discount on the full course as well in the description. So without further ado, here's how to use Airtable formulas. Hey, welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to talk about everyone's favorite, the formula field. Now, the formula field is extremely powerful. I could probably do a whole course all about Airtable's formula field, but I want to just do a quick introduction here so you understand how to use it. So formulas in Airtable take a value from one or more fields in a record and output something else. In English, what we mean is let's say we want to take the value in budget add in the value in overhead, and then output the total cost of the piece of content. Well, in that case, we're going to use the formula field. We're taking existing information and turning it into something new in the same table. Another example that we'll do in a moment is let's say we have a launch date and we want to calculate a draft date, which is always one week before the launch date. Well, we're going to take the value in launch date. We're going to subtract seven days and that's going to give us our draft date. And so when you think about that, should I be using a formula field? The question is, are you taking existing information in your table and turning it into something new? So let's use those two examples. So I'm going to add a new field here that's going to add budget and overhead. So we're going to call this total budget, which is budget plus overhead. And I'm going to select a formula field. When I do that, it's going to ask me what formula do I want to use? So I'm simply going to say, I'm going to take the value in budget. Now, if you're an Excel user, you might already see something different. We're naming the field budget. I'm selecting it and I'm doing plus overhead. As I type that out, Airtable says, do you want to insert the field? And I do. So let's create, let's format it just quickly as a currency like that. Let's create that field. And then you see, I have total budget, which is budget plus overhead like so. Now, why? what happens if I update information? Let's say the overhead is now 2,500. You'll notice that the budget updates automatically as well to now be 22,500. So this is a computed field, which means that its value is based on the value of other fields. And this is similar to Excel. So if I change anything, 4,000, you'll notice that that total budget field updates takes a little bit of time sometimes. Let's create one more. Let's say I want to calculate a draft date that is always seven days before the launch date. I'm going to go ahead and insert left. Let's say I call this draft date. I'm going to use a formula field because I'm taking the value in launch date and calculating the draft date from that. Let's expand here. And here I might say, well, how do I tell Airtable that the value of this field should be seven days before the launch date? So let me click on learn more here, which will bring me to the formula field reference. This is where you can find the different functions, the little automatic calculations that Airtable can do in the formula field. So let's go to date and time functions. That's what we want to do. And here we see date add which adds specific count units to a date time. In English, what that means is that we're going to take a specific date, add a unit of days, weeks, or months to that date. So let's go ahead and try to create that. So I'm going to say, okay, date add. As I write that, you'll see that it gives me that little function at the bottom. And it says, okay, give me a date. Well, I'm going to give it the launch date like so. And then I'm saying, I want the date that is seven days before, which is my count. So minus seven. But then I need to tell Airtable, is that seven years? Is it months? Is it days? So I'm going to go ahead and add days like so. Close the parentheses to say this is the calculation that I want. So I'm going to go ahead and create that field. And you notice that it gives me that draft date. Now, I'm going to remove the time. Not there, there we go, save that. And now I have the date that is seven days before the launch date. Well, let's say the launch date is pushed back by a week. 
the draft date automatically updates based off of that launch date. So those were two examples of formula fields. Now from here, I highly recommend you check out the formula field reference and understand all the different things you can do with the formula field, but it can get quite overwhelming. I'm gonna add in the description of this lesson additional webinars or resources where you can learn more about the formula field. And if you have trouble, let me know and I'm happy to do more lessons around the formula field. So you might be wondering, why do I have a spreadsheet type open? So if you don't use Excel or have it in the past and are not familiar with the formulas in Excel, you can stop this lesson. You can skip to the next one uh, and, and finish this section. But if you are an Excel person or a Google Sheets person, do listen on and I'll kind of talk through the main differences between Airtable and spreadsheets. And this is uh, something personally that I had to get over as an ex Excel um, power user. So let's kind of do the same things we just did a moment ago in Excel and highlighting the main differences. So the main difference with Excel and Airtable is that Excel is a spreadsheet, which means that you have no concept of predefined information you're going to put in. An example here is I've you know said that the C column should have budget, but then I just have the word Jeff in it. I can't stop people from putting in certain types of information. Uh, in Airtable, you can, and that really impacts how you use formulas. So first here, we're putting an uh, uh, equal sign. We don't have to do that in Airtable because Airtable defines the field itself as a formula. So if we want to add budget plus overhead, we would say take the value in C2 and add it to the value in C4 we're not saying anything about the rest of the cells in that column, and that is different from Airtable. In Airtable, you can't say that uh, you know the E column for the second row is is the addition, and then you know the the third row is the multiplication of uh, the two cells before it. Uh, in Airtable, you both know what information is going into each field, or at least information type. Um, and the formula is consistent for that field, which isn't the case in Excel. So there are advantages and disadvantages to this. Uh, the advantage is that you have more uh, data um, validation up front. The disadvantage is if you need to change what you want to calculate, you have to create multiple formula fields. Another I would say disadvantage or difference is that they aren't necessarily the same formulas. So if I wanted to the draft date, which was seven days before the due date in Excel, I would just go here minus seven and Excel understands that this is removing seven days. Um, so it does take a little bit of habit to get used to. But overall, I found formulas in Airtable to be extremely powerful and to be extremely understandable and intuitive once you've worked with them. So again, do check out the additional resources in the description of this video. Um, and then I'll see you in the next lesson where we do the first homework or take, take uh, some homework for you to complete the first section on the basics of Airtable.